Central Asia is an ancient land which inspired numerous legends and epics over the years. This is the place where the most mysterious secrets of the East are hidden. Many well-known talented people infused Central Asian countries with their beautiful creations. Our story is about its greatness and mysteriousness. The information about the Hethelite state which survived to our days is quite complicated and controversial. Who are they, mysterious mighty Hethelites who created a great empire in Central Asia? You will learn about it from the next episode of the documentary series. Who are they, the Hethelite people whose great state in 5th, 7th centuries united almost the whole territory of Central Asia? Nowadays, almost all modern scientists and reference books know that the Hethelites were bellicose nomadic tribes who founded a great empire in Central Asia. Its borders were stretched from the Caspian Sea to Kashgar and from the Oral Sea to India. A powerful union of these tribes invaded Iran and northwestern India in 5th 6th centuries and established a state which included Middle Asia, Afghanistan, part of northern India, and eastern Iran. These facts are universally recognized in the scientific world, but the origin of these people is still being argued about. There are two radically opposite points of view. Some scientists are proving the Turkic origin of the Hethelites and derive them from Central Asia. Others are certain that they are indigenous people of Hindu Kush Valley and descend from Iranian people. The theory that they were Iranian-speaking people is the most widely spread. In particular, in the middle of the 20th century, the Uzbek scientists stated that the settled population of the Hethelite state preserved and developed ancient local languages of the Iranian group, mainly the Sogdian language. However, there are also a lot of evidences confirming the place and the role of the Turkic-speaking peoples in the Hethelite state. Central Asian scientists consider the year of 455 the time of the establishment of the state when the Hethelite's envoys came to China. Exactly at that time, the core of that power had been already formed and by the beginning of the 6th century it became a great empire. The Hethelites is a Turkic Mongol horde which, according to Song Yun, originated from the Old Thai mountains and moved to the steppes of modern Turkestan. Byzantine historians, for some unknown reason, referred to them as White Huns. In the second quarter of the 5th century, the Hethelites gained strength and spread their power to the west. From the upper reaches of the Yulduz to northwest from Karashar, then from the river Li to the lake Balhash, the basin of the lake Isikul, the steppes of Chu and Talas, and the Sirdarya river valley to the Aral Sea. According to some sources, one of the headquarters of the Hethelites Khan was located near Talas. In 440, they occupied Sogdiana or Mavoranar and probably Balkh, Bactria or Turkestan as well. Eftalit is the name of one of the то есть его в китайских источниках называется фамилия. Мы тогда у тюрков не было фамилии. Hethelite was the name of a ruler, but in Chinese sources they use it as a surname. 
But at that time, the Turks didn't have surnames. Thus, we can presume that Hethelite was his name. The Chinese spelling was Yada, Yeda, Ida, Itan, Yedan, written by different hieroglyphs. Until you figure it out, you could be confused and think that these terms are the names of different tribes or kingdoms. But in reality, they were different names of one kingdom. This country was a great state in the 5th century already. The kingdom included the great part of eastern Turkestan, Mon, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. But before it, the state underwent a long process of development and unification. Входили в состав этого государства, но до этого, до этого, это государство э, прошел длительный процесс развития и объединения. Even in peaceful times, no one was able to look at or even hear about Hethelite without awe or fear, let alone openly wage a war against him. Lazar Parpetsi, Armenian historian. Century. Information about the Hephthalite state which survived to our days is quite complicated and controversial. The only solid and doubtful data preserved are descriptions of some events like wars with Shahanshah Piroz. The rule of Peros, the 17th king of the Sassanids dynasty, 459-484, was marked by the wars with the Hephthalites. In 482, in one of the battles, Hephthalites ran in front of the enemies, luring them into the valley surrounded by steep mountains. Trapped, Peros began negotiations with them. The Hephthalites king stated that he will have mercy if the Persian ruler prostrates himself, proclaiming him as his master. During the Second War in 479-480, when Persian army crossed the interstate border and was defeated, the King Peros had to leave his son Kavard as hostage to the Hephthalites. In the Third Campaign in 484, Peros and his army were entrapped and fell down into the camouflage ditch while pursuing allegedly retreating Hephthalites. As a result, the Sassanid army was completely defeated. It was a loss which no one had ever seen. A heavy burden of a tribute to be paid to Hephthalites was laid on a run, and it wasn't lifted until the 60s of the 6th century. Согласно византийским и китайским источникам, термин «эфталит» не имеет явной этнической окраски, хотя означает выходцев из тюркской среды, из оседлого гунского народа. According to Byzantine and Chinese sources, the term «эфталит» doesn't have any ethnic meaning, although it refers to Turkic natives, to settled Han nation, even to Yuezhi, urban tribes, descendants. In addition to general indication that the Hephthalites are white Huns, in Indian sources there is a reference to Huna's name. In Pahlavi Zoroastrian literature, Hephthalites are called Zions. The word Hephthalite has about 20 different spellings in different historian sources, and no one of them is considered the right name of the founders of great Hephthalite empire. В персидских хетал или хайтал, а в китайских вообще искажено для неузнаваемости еда, еда, един, едай. An imperceptible but paradoxical situation occurred in the history when all ancient testimonies confirmed the existence of one objective historian phenomenon. However, one modern historian is trying to deny it. For example, ancient sources claim that the so-called Hephthalites had the Turkic origin, but modern science lovely insists on referring to them as Iranian-speaking nations. Didn't the Chinese sources indicate that the Hephthalites were the branch of Turkic tribes? Didn't Byzantine court historian testify that the Hephthalites were the Huns, or rather white Huns, which are recognized as Turkic-speaking nation by contemporary scientists. Didn't the Arab sources call Hephthalites the Turks without any hesitation? 
didn't the Indian sources mean Hans, a Turkic tribe, when they were calling them Hunas? We could continue this list, providing references to other Eastern sources on Central Asian history. Therefore, those independent linguists who attempted to narrow their searches to the Turkic world are on the right track, though they didn't find any conclusive evidence yet. Even their cautious attempts are instantly opposed by supporters of Iranian theory. Ifdaliti eta hionidi, hioni eta kachevniki, katori wa veste upominaisa, ani nazivaisa hunami, i slova hun, slova hun. Tože v horni eta at slova hion, a vi skiste hion, eta kachevniki, turi. The Hethalites are the Hyanites, the Hyons. They are nomads who are mentioned in Avesta. They call them the Huns. The word Hun originated from the Avestan word iron. They were the nomads, Tus. The Hethalites arrived together with the Kushans but stayed in Badakhshan. In the 4th and mainly in the 6th century, they conquered many territories, almost the whole eastern part of the Kushan Empire. They also conquered the Central Asia, but some Kushans continued to live in the Indian part before the Arabs' invasion. The Hethalites had fair and red complexion. Images of the Hethalites from Chaganyan, Haise, have been preserved on the painted walls of Afrasel. There were disputes about the Turkic origin of the Hethalites. Some researchers claim that the Kushans are also Turks, but linguistic and anthropological materials deny it because they were people of the Caucasian race type. They have nothing to do with the Turks. Neither their language nor anthropology had any relevance to the Turks. On the cover of Boba Jan Gafura's book, there are images of two Hethalites. One has a red complexion, the other white. These are the pictures from Athraseab's wall. Representatives, kings from the High Valley, from Chaganan, were depicted on it. Один с красным лицом, другой с белым лицом изображение. А это стены живописи Афрасиаба. Там, значит, представители это царки из Кисарской долины Чаганьяна. The Athalita are of the stock of the Huns, in fact, as well as in name. However, they do not mingle with any of the Huns known to us, for they occupy land neither joining nor even very near to them. They are not nomads, but for a long time have been established in a goodly land. They are the only ones among the Huns who have white bodies and countenances which are not ugly. Their manner of living is unlike that of their kinsmen, nor do they live a savage life as they do. But they are ruled by one king, and since they possess a lawful constitution, they observe right and justice in their dealings both with one another and with their neighbors in no degree less than the Romans and the Persians. Procopius of Caesarea. The Hectolites strengthened their position on both sides of Hindu Kush in Bactria and Kobol. In 520, their Khan, during Chinese pilgrim chronicler Son Yun's travel, had a residence to the north of Hindu Kush and moved from his winter residence in Bactria to his summer residence in Badashan, depending on a season. In Kobul, in old Greek and Buddhist provinces Kapika and Ganthara, the minor Hethalite leader, Tigin, heir of the dynasty whose second king ruled in 520, was settled down. The Hethalites behaved like barbarians in Ganthara, in the high culture environment where Hellenism and Buddhism transformed this country into new Hellas and new Buddhist holy land. The Hethalites killed local citizens, persecuted Buddhists, destroyed monasteries and art monuments, consequently exterminating a 500-year-old Greco buddhist civilization. Persian, as well as Chinese texts, mark tyranny and vandalism of this fort.
Из Кабула и в Талит и Зорка следили за богатствами Индии. The Hittalites kept a close eye on India's wealth. Having been opposed by the Indian Emperor Skanda Gupta, they were waiting for a chance which came after the monarch's death in 470. The Indian Empire declined probably to the division into two branches of Gupta dynasty. The first, represented by Buddha Gupta, 476-494, and Bhanu Gupta, 499-543, ruled in Molwa. The second, represented by Pura Gupta, and Narasimha Gupta, ruled in Bihar and Bengal. Due to weakening of Gupta's power, the Heptalites started to raid India. The Heptalites Khan, who was the leader of the invasions and whom the Indians called Toraman, died in 502, who wasn't the Khan of all Heptalites. The latter lived to north of Hindukush, in Bactre and Badakhshan, as we've already mentioned. The leader of the campaign was minor prince, or Tigin. Tegin of Kobol, to be exact. Three inscriptions containing information about this commander, discovered in Kura, northwest of Punjab, Gwalior and Iran, prove that he conquered not only the Indus' basin, but Molvo as well. His coinage duplicates the coinage of his contemporary, the Indian emperor Buddha Gupta. Toramana's son and successor, Mihirakula, who is known to his spiritual Indian name in Sanskrit, Sunny Race, and who ruled his horde from 502 to 530, was a real Attila for India. We don't know what happened to Hethalite's clans in Punjab after Mihirakula's reign. Probably they continued to bother their neighbors, though they were not so dangerous anymore. In the second half of the 16th century, Prabhakara, Tainus was Maharaja, 605, defeated them. In 605, his elder son, Rajavartana, also was at war with them, and later the great Indian emperor, Harsha Shiladitya, 606-647 became famous for his victories over the Heftalites. Nevertheless, starting from the second half of the 8th century, the Heftalites of India faded from the view of history. Obviously, their hordes had exterminated each other or integrated into Punjab's population. Some of them managed to find their way into Indian aristocracy. They don't follow the Buddhist precepts and worship many deities. They kill living creatures and eat meat rare. Chinese sources. After the year of 462, Kashgar's envoys ceased to visit the Wu Empire as well as Hutan's envoys after 467. In 479, the Hethalites conquered Tufan region and in 490-497, Urumqi. In 495, they defeated southern Teluds as well as northern Teluds in 496. So, by the beginning of the 6th century AD, the Hethalites governed over the most part of eastern Turkestan. In Beishi, it is said, Kangu, Hotan, Chalet, Ansi, and up to 30 other small counties in western lands depend on Yeda's ruler. Since the Heftalites conquered the most part of Middle Asia, Eastern Turkestan and many other lands on the way to India, it becomes clear that by the middle of the 6th century, after subjugating such large territories, the Heftalites created a great empire. The Liangchu reported that after strengthening their positions, the Heftalites conquered the neighboring states – Bosi, Persia, Gibin, North India, 
Янци, Каршар, Гуци, Куча, Шиле, Кашгар, Гумо, Аксу, Ютьян, Хотан и others. The lands of this state stretched for more than 1,000 li. By the second half of the 6th century AD, a new state association with the Turkic Khaganate was emerging. It played a significant role in the history of Central Asia. The Turkic Khagan, Bumin, waged a war against Joan Joans, who ruled over Turks in that period. As a result of the Western campaign in 554, which was headed by Bumin's younger brother, who had the title of Yavgu Istemikagan, the Turks subjugated the whole central Kazakhstan, Semirechia and Khorezm in only one and a half year. In 555 they reached the Aral Sea and the borders of the Hethelite state. To fight against the Hethelites, the Turks needed military force and time. They didn't want to win quickly, so they sent their envoys to Iran. Why did they choose Iran as an ally? Because the Iranian Shah Peroz lost the battle to the Hethelites. Thus the Iranians were their vessels who paid tribute to them. The Turks were aware of it and made a proposal to form an alliance against the Hethelites and Iran agreed. So, in 562-564, the Allied military forces defeated the Hethelites. Now the Turks' lands were expanded to Amudarya. Iran got independence. They don't live in cities. Their rulers usually stay in nomadic camps in felt tents. For the king, they erect a large square tent and pull wool carpets around it. The king wears colorful silk clothes. He sits on the golden bed with its legs shaped as four golden phoenixes. Song Yun, Chinese pilgrim chronicler. The Sassanids and the Turks formed an alliance against the Hethelites, which was strengthened by the marriage of Khosro I to Istami's daughter. The Turkic legation which passed through Sogd was killed by the Hethelites except one person who managed to escape and informed the Kagan about the envoy's extermination. The war became inevitable. After mobilizing the army, the Turks invaded the Hethelite state. Judge Tashkent was the first to be conquered. Then, after crossing the river Churchik, the Turkic army stopped in Maymuk, a county in the Samarkand region to the south from Zarafshan. Ifstalitsky Tsar не решился принять бой на равнине, где конница тюрков имела больше преимуществ. The Hethelites king hesitated the battle on the valley where the Turks' cavalry would have an advantage. He retreated to the mountains and took the fight near Nesef, Karshi. The Turks gained victory in the battle which lasted for eight days. At the same time, Khosro I Anushri Von also set off against the Hethelites and occupied some regions located to the south from Amudaria. When the Turkic legation arrived in Constantinople in 568, the Emperor Justin asked the envoys, Have you brought all the Hethelite's power under control? Yes, the envoys answered. Thus, we understand that by 568, the great Hethelite state was defeated. According to the treaty between Turks and Persians signed in year 566 or 571, according to other data, Khosro I Anushri I acquired former Hethelite its lands to the south from Amudaria, Sint, Bost, Arrohadji, Arakozi, Zabulistan, Dardistan, Kabulistan, and hereditary piece of land of the Hethelites king Faganish, Chaganen. The Turks got Sogdiana, Shash, Fergana, and eastern Turkestan. Typical example for the empire. 